Thanks a lot. I'll open with a quick update on Jacobs. I know you guys are probably uh, concerned, want information on that. You know, after our medical staff did x-rays and MRI during the game Saturday night, the county's got a sprained uh, left knee ligament, which is non-surgical. We expect a full recovery this season. He's performing rehab daily. He started yesterday. Not sure the length of time he'll be out, which I know you'll want to know, but we don't know that yet. It'll be week to week. Um, but more importantly, his family and uh, his parents were with him Saturday. We got to spend time with him. and He was down a little bit, but uh, he'll be back from it. He'll be back this year. And um, we're actually fortunate it wasn't worse than it was, by the way. So that's the good news. Um, on to Notre Dame now for us. We're excited to play a program of that much prestige and um, I think a, a lot of Ryan Kelly and his staff. You know, they do a tremendous job. Um, they've got a very storied program of which our players have been made aware of and understand. They've got some really good football players. You know, they played a really good game um, Saturday and uh, did a lot of good things um, with their program. So we're excited for the opportunity. I know a lot of our fan base is planning on going up there. I think these kind of games in college football are really cool because you get to go play somebody that you don't normally play. So for I know for our fan base, is really excited. Our team's excited. I mean, be the first team ever from Georgia to get to go to South Bend to play, and uh, we're excited for that opportunity. Raise your hand if you have a question, and we'll get a four mic to you, please. So, just to clarify, Jake will not play this week. Just to clarify, Jacob will not play this week, but Jacob's going to be week to week from this point forward. We don't know how long it's going to be, and it's going to be kind of week to week. Kirby, given the challenge of this week, how, I guess if there's a plus, the fact that Jake got thrown into a game that was zip-zip, I mean, how much more confidence do you have with Jake having gone through what he did Saturday night? Well, I think sometimes it happens the unexpected way. You certainly don't script that to happen that way. I felt that uh, he came in and managed the situation well. And every situation will be different because App State obviously wasn't planning for him. So uh, next thing he probably will be. Um, so we know that. And Jake Fromm's a mature freshman that's going to be able to take over the offense and uh, hopefully go out and execute. He's got some good players around him. They use those guys. Kirby, we've heard a lot about uh, Jake Fromm's uh, acumen as a quarterback. Um, how, how much of the offense you guys trust him with at this stage, given that you know, he's going into a second career game as a quarterback in college? Yeah, Jake does a good job. He's a very mature kid. Um, we're excited about where he's at and we've got to continue to work with him. And I know the team is really excited about the opportunity to go play another day. And that's what we're focused on. Um, how has Jacob responded these last few days? And as a coach, what, what do you tell someone who's dealing with that? Well, he'd be positive. I mean, you look at it from the outlook of, I mean, we had Nick talk to him. Could have very easily been similar to Nick's, and it wasn't. Um, had several guys talk to him. I think he knows the game of football, that injuries happen. And look across college football now, and it's, we're not the only ones dealing with it. So you look at history, there's been teams that had this happen before, and other guys got to step up and play, and everybody's got to play uh, around him. I'm just disappointed for, for, for Jacob because of how hard he worked and how much he grew and how much better he had gotten. And he really didn't get to showcase that and show it the other day. Um, I want to ask for updates. Simon McKinley, Malcolm, and uh, Aaron Davis, kind of where would they be at this, for this coming week? Yeah, we hope Solomon's able to go. We're going to find out a lot more. We don't know, you know what the recovery did, not playing the other night, find out where he's at a little more today. Um, same thing with AD. You got to play a little bit of the game. He's going to be fine and get to go. Um, and then Malcolm again is week to week. Uh, Kirby, I think the last time you faced Notre Dame was in the national championship game uh, almost five years ago. Looking at that, remembering that team and this Notre Dame team, are there any significant differences? Yeah, it's hard for me to do comparisons because I, I don't. I can't remember that far back, to be honest with you. I mean, obviously, we had a lot of time to prepare for that game, and uh, that team was probably a little different. I know quarterback-wise, the kid they got, quarterback now, is a really special, talented player. Extremely fast, extremely athletic. Um, I was aware of who he was because he was the same high school as Minka Fitzpatrick when we recruited Minka. So I got to see him there. Um, but, you know, they got a great program, and they've always got good players. They got really good looking offensive linemen, and they got four returning starters. Their defense alignment are, are really big kids, um, so it's, it's uh, exciting. 
Kirby, when, when you got a situation like this with a quarterback, you've got one game of film on new offense court. How do you cobble together film to, to figure out what they might do? Do you get Memphis stuff from last year? How, how does that work? Yeah, I think every place is different. I think everybody does it a different way. You know, they go out and sometimes get uh, film from the last time he was there. They got, they got a staff that's come from a little bit everywhere. Receivers coach from I think Arizona State or somewhere they've worked together before. Coach Kelly's been involved in the offense and he's still there. So there's still remnants of that. So I think Anytime you play a team like that, you got to do a great off-season study, which is what we've done, and try to put, put together as much as you can and, and do the best you can because at the end of the day, you got one game tape to go off of. Kirby, obviously, injuries are pretty common. Um, they're bigger when they're quarterback. They're bigger when they're really early in the season. Do you have any sense for your team's resilience and how you think they'll respond on how in tune kind of to this group are you right now? Well, I think anytime you get injuries, especially at the quarterback position, it, it, it tests your, your metal a little bit. And uh, I think that's what this team will, team will do. We've tried to put them through adversity throughout camp, throughout all season. It's the reason you do what you do. You know, and you look back at, I mean, think about what, you know, Ohio State was in a little different place, but a few years ago they lost, what, Braxton Miller, and then they lost Barrett, I think, an ankle maybe in the same year. Um, and, and they went all the way into the third guy. So, I mean, it, it's happened before. Certainly, we don't plan on it happening, but those are things that happen in football, and you've got to have guys prepared to play. It's the reason why you do two spot drills and you have two teams going on. It's the reason why you scrimmage everybody and not just the ones. So, those guys have to get prepared. But, I mean, I think our team is, 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 is they're going to take it in stride. They're going to go out there and practice well, practice hard. and. Uh, they get it, you know. It's not like everybody's gloom and doom because we didn't get to see Jacob much this year. How the uh, freshman that got into the game on Saturday great out to you after watching the film? Some good, some poor. I mean, each guy kind of individually. A lot of them got in on special teams. Um, I think the biggest jump they can make is the next game because a lot of them don't know what to expect. And to be honest with you, a lot of those kids had anxiety, were a little nervous. Some of them didn't do the right things all the time. We hope to use that today teach and grow. But we're no different than any team in the country. You know, they had guys play for them that were freshmen. You know, and, and, and those guys have got to grow and get better. If they were playing as a freshman, that means they're pretty talented. So the hope is that those guys are putting them in there for a reason so that in games like these, the moment's not too big for them. How big of a blessing was the coach and the bright branch decided to come back? Well, I mean, you certainly hope it's a big blessing because he's been able to get a lot of reps. I feel unfortunate for Bryce is that you know, he didn't, your three quarterback doesn't typically get any reps. So that's the three last week. It wasn't like he took practice reps. He didn't take a lot of them. He, what, he, what he takes usually is when y'all are there for uh, routes on the air. He didn't get a lot of opportunity because your second guy has to take all the reps. Um, so he didn't get a lot of those. He'll be able to get a lot more this week, obviously, and hopefully use those um, the right way so he can play a little better. Uh, coach, so well, last week Notre Dame had three guys that ran for over 100 yards, and uh, one of those was uh, Brandon Wimbush, a quarterback. So, what, what, what type of challenges are there in terms of the run pass option and the dual right quarterback? A lot of challenges. First of all, he is an explosive athlete. He looks as fast as any player on the team. Uh, maybe a couple of the wideouts are faster, but he's a very explosive player. They do a good job with the RPO system. Uh, I've had a lot of respect for Coach Long for a long time, their offensive coordinator. I mean, when he was at Memphis, I think I watched the game one night. I think they scored every single possession of the game once. I mean, it was like score, 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 score. And uh, he does a good job of using the dual threat quarterback. But the backs are big and physical. I mean, bigger than our backs and physical. And uh, they run downhill last year. And, they, like I said, they got four old linemen that have played for a long time. And uh, they're as good looking at a line as you'll play ever because they're all big and uh, they do a good job running the ball. But the quarterback's dual threat, as you saw the guy last week scramble around, this guy's going to be much faster and much more athletic doing that. Kirby, Notre Dame's had such a presence in this sport for so long. I was kind of curious. I assume you may have been too young to remember when Georgia – be him after the 80 season, but just your first few memories of, of Notre Dame when you were a kid, just being a football fan. Yeah, my memories of uh, Notre Dame are more Rocket Spell, Tim Brown. Um, that time, I, I was too young to really remember the national championship game, and was actually not in, in the state of Georgia yet. Um, but 
Uh, it's a special place, you know that, and uh, they've had a lot of talented players. I mean, most Heisman Trophy winners, All Americans. I mean, second nationally in victories. I mean, it's just a, a resume that speaks for itself. But my personal memories are Tim Brown turning punts and Rocky Ishmael turning punts. From getting to Jake when you were at Alabama, then when you came here, what can you tell me about like what makes him tick? What, what, how he got to this point? Uh, what you don't see on film? Jake is a he's a gamer. I mean, he's just a kid that grew up around the game. I mean, I look at him comparing to a, what would be a coach's son, a football junkie. He likes it. He loves being around it. He's always cheering and, and, and fired up out there. I mean, every time he makes a, a good throw or a play in practice, he's jacked up and he's as, he's as excited for the kid who made the play as he is himself. I mean, it's a, a defensive coach at times. You watch him do it, and you get you, you see him cheering, and you think like he's rubbing it in. That's just who he is. And he really is passionate about the game, and he can't let his emotions get in the uh, way for him because for him it's just an excitement. He's just been that kind of way. He's real competitive. Kirby, uh, with Jacob out, who slides up uh, the depth chart, and then how does that affect you know who runs the scouting team? Because I guess maybe Stetson Bennett ran last week. Yeah. How's that? Yeah, we really, I mean, to be honest with you, we've got a plan for that, and we'll rotate guys throughout practice. Um, we're very fortunate here. We've got a really good walk-on program. we got some good guys to help us. That really helps that Bryce is back because um, it allows Stetson to also stay with us and, and help us on the scout team. we got Sam Vaughn, who did a great job last year with the scout team role, the quarterback, and he took a lot of reps in the spring when Bryce wasn't here. You know, Steve's able to take those. So we've got a couple other athletic guys that can play quarterback. So we'll do it by committee and kind of my peers. Kirby, I know with quarterback recruiting, you get guys looking at depth charts. What was it about Jake who made him say, I get that there's a five star guy who may be starting as a true freshman, but I'm going to go here anyway? Well, I think it's just that. I don't think that Jake, Jake Fromm cares about the depth charts. And that's, you know, so many guys maybe think that kids do. I, the best quarterbacks I've ever been around are the ones that don't care. And I don't think he ever cared. I mean, he, he, he loved Georgia. The kid loved Georgia since he was growing up. He's wanted to be a Georgia boy all his life. And that's what he chose to do. It didn't matter who was here. And uh, he's pretty confident in himself, which that's what the best ones are. So that's what he made the decision based on. Um, so, uh, J.R. Reed kind of got in the action earlier the other night. Um, how has he provided that spark in the secondary? How do you see that? I think he's continuing on uh, this weekend. Yeah, he was, you know, I've kind of been a J.R. Reed fan since he got here. He's very competitive. He loves the game. Um, he plays fast. Uh, he's a good open field tackler. Uh, I just think the kid's really a, a student of the game. He takes it serious. His approach to the game is the right way. So I've enjoyed watching him grow. I thought he played a good game uh, the other night. Um, he's got to continue to play better and improve, but he played a position star that he really only started practicing recently. And he also uh, played safety. So um, uh, I thought that he was one of the bright spots to go out in the game and do it, you know, with the lights on. So we need to continue to play good and play well in the secondary and get where we got to go. Kirby, how did you all grade the, the O-line running pass blocking and, and Andrew especially in his first start? Up and down. I think each guy was up and down. A couple good plays, a couple bad plays. I thought Andrew handled the moment well. He had a couple of MAs that probably were to be expected. They did a couple of things that we hadn't seen that were new to him, which Welcome to football. He'll get that every week in this league. So nobody's going to be just predictable and do the same thing. But we'll continue to work with those units and try to get the best guys. The hardest thing is just not, not going with Sally. You know, whether or not he's going to uh, be able to go and be there. And he had kind of earned that starting right. But with the injury, he wasn't 100% healthy. So that forces Dashaun, Kendall, and Pat, and those guys to keep rotating there. You talked about the history and tradition of, of Notre Dame uh, for a team going on the road to play in that venue. Is that uh, on your radar in terms of uh, a concern when you have 17 freshmen played and all that? Or <coughs> they've been enough big environments? You know, I really don't know. I don't. The, the, the kids nowadays are different. You know, if this was my freshman year and you're going there, I think it would be much more intimidating. I just, to be honest with you guys, these kids, they know Notre Dame's players where a long time ago, you didn't know Notre Dame's players unless you saw them on TV because 
you didn't get recruited with them. These kids went to all-star games with all those guys. They know all those players. You know, the, 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 our kids and the kids from Philly, they played in the state championship game. The kids from Cedar Grove Pace. There's a lot of guys that played in big games before. I know it's not the same thing as playing at Notre Dame, but to them a lot of times, there's not a huge difference for them. So the moment for most freshmen hasn't been too big, but certainly, you know, when you go on the road, the environment changes. So you have to try to simulate that environment and make sure that they're calm and they play well. Coach Mark, what can you tell us about Stetson Bennett? We've heard a lot about him in practice, you know, doing well, but uh, he's kind of not exactly a household name right now, but seems hopefully you never have to go to him that far down the depth chart, but what can you tell us about him? Uh, I think Stetson's a talented player. He's been one of the bright surprises of our uh, camp. As far as I think Coach Schumann does a tremendous job with our walk-on program. I think it's one of the best in the country because you have a lot of kids that would love to come to the University of Georgia and to get that opportunity to do that. You know, his father went to school here and he decided to come. And You know what? He's been a really pleasant surprise. He's got great arm strength. Um, he sees the field well. He's not exceptionally tall. But he is, uh, you can ask our defensive players, he's been a handful down there on the uh, scout team. He's done a great job of that. Kerry, you mentioned Notre Dame's offensive line earlier. Um, just how tough are those guys on that left side with Lynchy and Nelson? And uh, you know, given that NFL scouts seem to be looking at them pretty closely. Yeah, I think, you know, Lynch is probably going to be a first round pick. If not, he's going to be really close. But he came back and probably could have came out in mid one. He, he is very impressive and uh, smart of a man. That whole left side is really strong and powerful. Uh, they've got a good offensive line, as you'll see. It's pretty, as you'll see. Um, so we're excited for the challenge. You know, our defensive line needs to step up and play well because they're going to play against some big physical guys. And that, once you include them and the tight ends, it's, it's a very impressive group size-wise. Last question, please. Just kind of follow up on that just a little bit. I mean, last week, uh, y'all had some, you know, the office line for Apple State wasn't all that big, but now it's a completely different panel, like you said. Going from the strength like that to challenge, that's going to bring. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a great challenge. It's going to really find out a lot more about our defense because the backs are going to be bigger and faster. The quarterback's going to be bigger and faster. Um, the offensive line's bigger. The wideouts, they're all six. Three, six, four, six, five. So the matchups are going to be different. You know, it's going to be a lot different from that perspective. I uh, got a lot of respect for what Coach Long does offensively. You know, the last team tried to slow the game down and not go fast. This team's going to go fast. I mean, that's what they do. They're going to go tempo. And uh, when they do that, you got to go handle it. It's, it's what we work to do. So it's a great challenge for us defensively. But we're excited for it. We've got three days to get prepared for it. And, uh, same thing on offense. We're excited and we want special teams to continue to improve. Thank you, guys.